Do you ever think about your superhero alter ego and what that might be? Whether it's, you know, if you have a superhero, if you are a superhero, what's your alter ego in real life or vice versa? In real life, what would be your superhero power or, or, or image that you would want to present? You know, well, most of us don't have to make that kind of a choice in our lives. We're not going to have to lead that dual life of being a superhero. Uh, but in a sense, we almost do have that dual existence as it relates to the workplace for many of us. Right. So, I mean, we, we present a particular image or we try to present a particular image or, or uh, put on a, a particular uh, sort of um, display as, as at work so that we are taken seriously and seen as a professional. This is something we call professional presence. And it's something that we need to think about even now as we're, as we're engaged in, in college, if you're studying in college or, uh, you know, if you're just starting your career to think about um, what's the image that you're going to portray and what's going to be your alter ego at work. Again, to clarify, not not talking about leading two separate lives or, or being false, but um, what parts of your personality and and what can you do in the workplace to present the best possible version of yourself and the best possible image of yourself? So uh, to start, I want to take a look at what we mean in terms of professional presence. We're talking really about professionalism. So what do we mean by professionalism? Professionalism is essentially the conduct, aims, or qualities that characterize or mark a profession or a professional person. Now, note that this could be different depending on your profession, depending on um, the work environment that you're in. Professionalism will look different and may be required to behave differently. Um, but in some degree, degree, there is a sense of professionalism in, in whatever career field you're going to end up in. There are going to be standards. There are going to be expectations for how you dress and how you behave and how you speak. And uh, so we want to keep that in mind in terms of professionalism. Professionalism is important in the workplace for a lot of different reasons, including some of these, that it creates boundaries. It creates an atmosphere of improvement amongst the uh, uh, colleagues and employees. It, it enhances the sense of responsibility. It can mitigate conflict when people are professional in the workplace. Um, it can lead to increased job satisfaction because of reduced drama and reduced conflict and things like that. And it can also lead to a lot of personal growth. So uh, there are a lot of different reasons that professionalism is important. Um, so what are some of the qualities of our professional that are, or of professionalism. Um, first of all, uh, competence. People expect you to be competent in the field that you're working in. They expect you to have an understanding of what your job is, um, what the skills are that are required there, and be able to be able to perform those, uh, the skills, um, skillfully, essentially, right. To, to do a good job. They expect you to know what you're doing and have competence in, in the field that you're working in. They expect you to be ethical. They expect you to be honest. They expect you to be on time. They expect you to be responsible, um, with, with the company resources and with your, with the, uh, the resources that you're uh, granted and, and that you're using. And that. So, uh, ethics are of great concern in terms of professionalism. They expect you to have fundamentally solid communication skills. That includes things like interpersonal skills, the ability to work well with others and get along well with others. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean you have to be best friends or you have to be the world's greatest communicator, but the ability to, to engage with others and to work effectively with others. Um, to, to a certain extent, some um, basic presentational skills will probably also be expected of you, um, communicating with, you know, with a group about your product or about your service that you're providing and so forth. So just communication skills in general, which includes listening and don't, don't overlook that as a communication skill, the ability to listen effectively. Um, a professional is also reliable. They're reliable in terms of just, I mean, from the get-go, getting to work on time, staying for the appropriate amount of time, getting the amount of work done when you're meeting deadlines. You're expected to meet deadlines and be reliable in that sense and getting done what you are required to have done in the time that you're supposed to have it done, uh, being reliable in all of those ways at the most basic level. Uh, your appearance is another uh, quality of professionalism. Are you dressed for the job? Uh, are you dressed appropriately for that job? Now, does that mean you always have to be wearing a suit? No. In fact, I love that my job rarely, if ever, requires me to wear a suit. It requires a certain degree of formality in my dress, but not a suit and tie. And I like that about it. Other jobs may require a uniform. If you're an HVAC technician, there may be a uniform required for your job. So, uh, so, but maintaining that appearance of is, is important to uh, the sense of professionalism, both for those you work with and the customers that you're serving and so forth. 
And then just some general social skills. Again, you do not have to be best friends with everybody that you work with, but you should have enough social skill to say, good morning. How are you? Is there anything that I can help you with and have those you know, types of skills that you can, can coexist with others and, and in a reasonable way in, in the workplace where you're going to be spending a lot of time with these people. So now that we have an idea of what professionalism is, let's take a look at how that translates into professional presence and what we mean by that in terms of professional presence. Um, professional presence starts and we're going to kind of funnel this down um, based on, you know, the different components of professional presence, starting with what we call gravitas, communication and appearance. Those are things that have come up as we discuss professionalism, but in terms of establishing a professional presence for and a professional identity for yourself, these are important things. When we say gravitas, we're really signaling, signaling that you have the confidence and the credibility to get your point across and to create buy-in for your coworkers and from your coworkers and from your clients and so forth, from your superiors and supervisors. But you have this sense of gravitas, this sense of being taken seriously and, and people having confidence in you and that they can have confidence in you. You have the basic communication skills, as we talked about. You have the, the bearing and also the speaking skills to establish confidence and credibility to help establish that gravitas. And then the appearance, it's not just how we look, but how we present ourselves, how we behave non-verbally and, uh, and how we keep our work area and so forth. All of those things sort of go into uh, the foundation of establishing professional presence as well. These things then lead to things like trustworthiness, competence, authenticity. They feed into these things and help you establish that you are trustworthy, that you are competent, that you are authentic and all of those things, then, you know, kind of like funneling it down into presence. These are all things that will eventually lead to enhanced professional presence. And that's what we're shooting for. That's what we ought to be aiming for. So how do we go about doing that then? How do we develop this sense of professional presence? Well, first of all, we have to cultivate confidence in ourselves and in others, you know, that others have in us. So and we do that from those things we talked about through gravitas, communication, appearance. The, the, those are things that will cultivate confidence. And if we believe in ourselves, first of all, that's where it starts. We have to cult cultivate confidence within ourselves. We have to dress the part and look the part so that we feel the part. Um, but also then that will help cultivate confidence that others have in us and help us establish that professional presence with others when we can do that, when we can cultivate confidence in that way. We also need to communicate well. This has come up a few times now. Not surprising in a communication course, right? That and in a series of communication videos that we would talk about communicating well. But again, this extends into not just communicating well in terms of um, being able to have a conversation with your coworkers and with your clients and things, but also you know, some basic presentational skills, some really effective listening skills are really important. So. I'm just, just being a, a well-rounded communicator and developing that communication competence that will help us stand out as, as being, um, uh, professional in the workplace. We also need to dress and then act the part, you know, depending on how we dress, that's how people are going to treat us. That's how we're going to behave ourselves. So um, when we dress the part of a professional, then we will have their confidence and, and have confidence in ourselves when we don't when we dress sloppily and, and show that we don't care and don't take care of ourselves, then then other people will pick up on that as well. But when we look the part, regardless of whether your job requires you to wear a uniform, uh, that uniform ought to be put together well and ought to be maintained in as cleanly as possible. And you ought to look professional in that sense. Or if it requires you to um, be a little more dressed up in a, in a business sense, you know, in business formal wear, whatever it is, we ought to dress and act the part that is appropriate to our profession. And remember, you know, we, to, to kind of dip back into the superhero idea um, that there's a, there's the person and there's a persona. We need to differentiate between a person and a persona. There's us or there's Bruce Wayne, right? The, the, the billionaire, whatever, you know, playboy or whatever you want to call him. There's Bruce Wayne, the billionaire. And then there's Batman, the persona of Batman that he takes on. Right? And those are two different things. Uh, obviously in a superhero sense, that's one thing, but you know, if we look at the, the journey of Stephen Colbert, for example, who now has a successful late night show, but, but you know, many people got to know him as part of his persona on the daily show. And then through the Colbert rapport that, uh, that he was this kind of goofball really right wing kind of uh, faux newscaster, 
right? That, that, that but he, that was a persona that he put on. That's not who he really is. Now we see Stephen Colbert as really this, the, the person that he is, as opposed to the persona. We ought to be able to differentiate between those things. I mean, we have us as a person, but then we have the persona that we ought to wear at work. Again, this is not about being false or wearing a mask or doing anything like that. It's about what parts of ourselves do we really let out and, and, and to make ourselves the most um, uh, confident and, and viewed as the most professional person we can be in the workplace. So we need to at times again, differentiate between the person and the persona. Me as a person, I, my preference is to wear concert t-shirts and gym shorts everywhere I go. Um, but in the workplace and my workplace as a, as an educator, as a professor, that's not really something that's going to lend itself well to being taken seriously by my students or by my colleagues and things. So, so I dress the part. I mean, these are my clothes. I'm, I'm comfortable wearing these things. Uh, it's not something that I wear just around the house necessarily, but, uh, but it's a part of the persona that I put on as professor Rocky to, uh, to, uh, to, to play that role, so to speak, but it's part of me, but it's the part that I, that I bring out and let shine in that professional role. Another thing we need to consider in light of today's uh, modern technology and, and the way that we communicate today is our digital presence. So we now not only have to be concerned with how we look in, literally in the workplace, how we're dressed, how we're behaving in the workplace, but also online, both inside and outside of the workplace. If you think employers aren't looking at your digital footprint, then you're nuts. And if they're not, then they're irresponsible because they want to know what you're up to, how you're representing their organization, first of all, whether you're at work or not. So they need to keep an eye on it and they you know, need to know what kind of people that they're hiring and what kind of people they're employing. Um, so we need to be aware of our digital presence and how we appear in the digital world as well. So in, in keeping in mind the digital presence, um, we're talking about things like our email. Are we using, um, <clears throat> especially in a professional sense, our email um, should be professional. It should be, it should contain proper grammar and, and punctuation to start. And then it should use full words and it should be language that's appropriate for the workplace. So we need to maintain professionality in our emails. We need to maintain professionality in our text messages per, as they pertain to work. If we're texting with a boss or a colleague or something, Keep that in mind as well. We're not texting with our buddies. We're not texting with our, our family or friends. Um, we're texting with people for work. Keep that appropriate um, for that. You know, just imagine you're face to face with that person and, and that everybody in the office can hear you um, with your text messages. And remember that these things all leave a digital footprint. So it's potential, potentially everybody will see this at some point. So we need to be aware of social media. Um, what are we saying online? How are we portraying ourselves? And there's this idea of, you know, free speech and I'm outside of work and so forth. But yeah, but you are also representing their organization. If people know you work for them, and especially if you're talking about the company, about the organization that you work for, we need to be aware of these things that the companies are concerned about this and that they uh, pay attention to these things. And it could have an impact for us in the, in the workplace. And then how we use collaborative software, this is becoming more and more common in different organizations to use things like Google Drive or Teams, Microsoft Teams or OneDrive or whatever, using Slack. How are we using this collaborative software? I can, this is an extension of the workplace. And so we need to keep our involvement there professional. We need to use it responsibly. We need to again, watch our language, watch our nonverbal, watch our uh, punctuation and grammar and just the basic things like that so that we're using these things in a professional way and being seen and taken as a professional in those regards as well. So long story short, we need to, to start now thinking about how we're going to behave and how we're going to put ourselves together that, that put us in a good position to be seen as professional and, and to be taken seriously. It's hard to earn that credibility back. So once it's gone, it's kind of hard to earn back. So we ought to set that bar high from the beginning and look to maintain it there. It's much easier to maintain those high marks as, of professionalism than it is to, uh, to gain them back once they've been lost. If you have questions about professional presence or about anything else related to uh, communication in that regard in the workplace or outside of the workplace, please feel free to send me a message. I'd be happy to chat with you about it in that way. Shoot me an email or something. That'd be great. And uh, in the meantime, I hope that you will begin now giving thought to your professional presence, the way that you want to be seen in the workplace and the way that's going to allow you to be more effective in the workplace and begin um, being thoughtful about how we put that professional presence together and what we display in our workplace and, and establishing that professionalism.